Hey guys, what's up? It's Joe here today and I want to talk to you about my PFSense router build. So I decided to build my own router for my networking problems that I was having with my 65 devices. I lightly touched on this in my $1,700 a month video. I did start to have problems because, well, I doubled my device count in six months and sooner or later my networking solution just a few weeks ago that I had was going to give out. I only have an Asus RT68U router and then I had a surfboard modem that I was using and the, the ASUS router was really the heart of it and I think the chipset just couldn't handle all the wireless connections. So this is my solution. I'll also talk about a few other solutions that you could go about if you're having this issue and you have this many devices. You certainly don't have to build your own router. You could do this other ways. This is just what I decided to do and I want to share my experience with you on it. So this is a PFSense router, as I said, or PFSense box. If you want to know any more information about networking, PFSense routers, I recommend you check out this YouTube channel. I'll leave it in the description. I'll leave a link for you guys. This guy explains everything very well. I even learned a lot of networking things from him as well as information about building your own PFSense router and installing the software. So I'm gonna talk about what's inside of the router. I've got an Intel Pentium CPU in it, clocked at three gigahertz. It's a Skylake CPU, a pretty new model. And yeah, that's just overkill for a router. I could have gotten away with a Celeron or something even lower than that. Uh, it's running, I think about 30 to 40 watts is at least what I read online. So we're gonna see the power consumption here in a little bit. Probably still not bad compared to all the money I'm making from this router build. So I'm not really worried, but perhaps I could go with something a little bit more power effective in the future. The motherboard is a gigabyte. Some model I can't remember, I'll leave a link to all this in the description. And then I also have a 120 gigabyte SSD, that's way overkill for a router. You could get away with 64 and 32. Four gigabytes of RAM, overkill again. At least for what I'm doing right now, if I decide to do some kind of caching server, I might need more RAM, but I don't know too much about that right now. I think I'd go up to eight or 16 with this, but 16 is definitely more than enough. It's a micro ATX. You could probably even use a mini ITX board if you're going to build a router. And then at the heart of the router, this is really the most important part of it, is the Intel network interface card. If you're gonna build a PFSense router, you should use Intel. And it is a dual network interface card, which means it has two ethernet ports on the back. One of them is for the LAN, one of them is for the WAN. That just means the WAN is the one that goes out uh, to my ISP that actually gets my internet. And then the LAN is what connects to all my money making computers via wire and then it goes to my access points. So explaining the access points, these are uh, an ASUS RTA68U router, that's the one that I had before, I'm using it as an access point now, and a TP-Link Archer C2. I'll probably get more of those uh, C2s whenever I get more devices. And it's split up. 40 devices are connected to the RT68U because I remember that as uh, working whenever I was down to 40 devices. And then the Archer C2 is on 20 devices. I have determined that I'll probably do 20 devices uh, for, for all future access points just to keep the load even and fairly low. 20 isn't too bad for a router serving as an access point. And all an access point is, it's a, it's a wireless router that you buy, or that's what I call these. It's just broadcasting wireless signal, which is then sending it through the LAN to this PFSense router to process. The ethernet switch on my LAN is only five ports. I'll probably need more than that as I get more access points for the more devices I get. Uh, but this is what I have now. So that has fixed all of my issues. It hasn't increased speed, realistically it can, it's just a router, but it has increased stability and throughput to my devices as there are more resources to allocate. So other solutions, like I said, this is overkill. You really don't have to do this, but I wanted to try and build my own router just to see, because I was like, this is pretty interesting. You probably could get away with just using a bunch of access points. I know a few people who have done this, like you could just wire that Archer C2, not into a PFSense router, but you could just wire it into a, um, uh, the ASUS router and use the switch on the back as all routers have LANs of their own few ports and you could just plug routers into those and use them as access points and that'll probably get you better wireless connection as you have more options to connect to. So anyway this is my networking solution and I hope that was helpful to you guys. If you have any questions about it or you want to learn more then you can send me an email, go on the Facebook group or forum, check out that guy's YouTube channel if you want to build a PFSense router. But anyway, have fun making money, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Mails. I always skip the inbox for money-making websites and apps because I just want them to go into their corresponding folder. Mark as read. 
usually I will mark payment complete receipts as red because I don't need to see them. Say I re 